Hi everyone, we're back. It's Reva, I'm back on my couch in my living room. Here I am with my, oh, three boats and my flowers and my globe. My big goal for this time as we read is to be able to show you the country where we're going on the globe and have the globe stand not fall behind the couch. So let's see if I can accomplish that goal. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, so, we are reading our Dodsworth books. We have two more to read. We started out in New York, here in the United States, uh, with our mouse and our duck. We then went to Paris, France, in Europe, with our mouse and our duck. And this is where the duck got his little acorn cap remember and now he wears them in all the books he wears them he wears it in all the books um and then we went to london england and there's a double decker bus which is the fun bus where dogsworth thought he was talking to the duck but he was actually talking to the queen's duck remember that yeah, i love this one um still has his acorn cap see it right there on the cover uh so do you guys remember where we're going today? Do you remember? Raise your hand if you remember. Yes, go ahead. That's right. We are going to Rome. We're going to Rome, Italy. So Italy, oh, look, still wearing the acorn cap. Okay, so Italy is another country in Europe. So it's very close to France and England. Uh, let's Let's get the globe and remember what we're trying for, not dropping the globe stand behind the couch. Let's see. Oh, it's working so far. Okay, so here's our globe. We are still in, here we are in California. Shoop. Uh, but we're still going to Europe. We went to Paris, France. We went to London, England. And now we're going to Italy. And Italy is the country that people say looks like a boot. It's that orange, sticky outy country that's going right into the water. It's going and it looks like a boot with a heel kicking a ball that is the island of Sicily. But we are here, and so we're gonna go to Rome, which is right on the coast. See it? So parents and kids, you can go to our Britannica um, and go to where it says World Atlas, and it's clickable, and you can click right into the country you're going to, and then it'll click you into, and you can see like the landforms and the mountains, and it's really cool. So if you wanna go into their clickable maps, it's cool. Um, and you can see where Rome is. There's a lot of other cities in Rome, in Italy you might have heard of, like Venice or Florence or Naples. Italy's really famous for art and architecture. So let's see what pops up with Dodsworth and the Duck. Let's let's do it. Let's see if I can put this back on the stand without anything falling. Dodsworth in Rome by our good friend, Tim Egan. Title page. Ooh, the pretty building there. We see our friends. Let's see when this one was published. Copyright page. This one was originally written in 2011 and came out in this pretty edition in 2012. It's the year my daughter was born. Okay, here's our contents. The Eternal City, that means forever city, the Sistine Chapel, the Flea Market, and Arrivederci. That's some Italian. The Eternal City. Ooh. So at the end of the last book, we didn't know how they were going to travel to their new city. What do you think this is? What are they stepping off of? What do you think? I think it's a train. 
That's what I think. I think they took a train. You can take trains all through Europe, country to country, and it's pretty fantastic. So let's start. The sun began to set over Italy. The train came to a stop. I was right. Dodsworth smiled and looked down at the duck. Rome, he said. Okay, said the duck. The duck started walking away because Rome spelled R-O-A-M means wander around. Duck, that's not what he means. He means we're in the city called Rome. Okay. Where are you going, asked Dodsworth. You said Rome, said the duck, so I'm roaming. I meant Rome, Italy, said Dodsworth. We're here. The duck paused for a moment. I knew that, he said. I don't think he knew that. You can't wander off, said Dodsworth. Who, me, said the duck? Never. They walked out of the station. A small red scooter zoomed past. That looks like fun, said Dodsworth. The duck agreed, so they rented a scooter. It does look fun, maybe. They rode through the streets of Rome. The scooter was very fast. Many other scooters and cars whizzed by. They all came really close to each other. The duck held on tight. It had, he had to shut his eyes. Oh, look at our poor duck. Oh, he's so nervous. <laughs> you hold on with a wing. How do you do that? Look, said Dosworth. There's the Colosseum. The duck still had his eyes closed. Very nice, he said, even though he didn't see it. After a few moments later, Dodsworth shouted, Wow, the Pantheon. It's more than 2,000 years old. These are very old buildings built by the ancient Romans. Great, said the duck, but his eyes were still shut. They raced down a few more streets. See that, said Dodsworth? There's the Trevi Fountain. Amazing, said the duck, even though again, he saw nothing. There's another fancy, fancy cow. What are fancily dressed cows in these books? Hey, said Dodsworth, gelato. That's Italian for ice cream. The duck finally opened his eyes. Ice cream, he said, I love ice cream. Dodsworth pulled the scooter over and stopped. Dodsworth and the duck ordered gelatos. Dodsworth got a cone with three scoops, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. The duck got a cone with seven scoops, hazelnut, spumoni, rum raisin, almond, pistachio, coffee, and butterscotch. <laughs> Which one would you get? I would probably get the three scoop one, or maybe just one scoop, because it's hard to keep the scoops from falling, right? They watched folks throw coins into the Trevi Fountain. They say if you toss a coin over your shoulder into the fountain, you'll return to Rome someday. Why leave in the first place, asked the duck. Good point, said Dodsworth. Looking for a place to stay, Dodsworth drove a little slower this time. They rode past giant marble statues and stone fountains and old bridges and lush gardens. Cathedral bells rang throughout the city. Dodsworth and the duck loved Rome already. Chapter two, the Sistine Chapel. They found a hotel near Vatican City. That's where someone named the Pope lives. The next day, Dosworth said, let's go to the Sistine Chapel. Why, asked the duck. Because Michelangelo painted the ceiling, said Dodsworth. What color did he paint it, asked the duck. I'll show you, said Dodsworth. I think I'll bring my suitcase, said Dodsworth. I feel better having it with me. They walked to St. Peter's Square. There were huge columns all around. I feel smaller than usual, said the duck. You can say that again, said Dodsworth, but the duck decided not to. Why do you think he feels smaller than usual? I think because those columns are so big. This is a really big chapel. It's gigantic. They followed a group into the Sistine Chapel. Everybody looked at the, up at the ceiling. It's magnificent, said Dodsworth. Yeah, said the duck, not bad. A few minutes later, the duck said, 
That's weird. What's weird, asked Dodsworth. There isn't one duck in the entire painting, said the duck. Dodsworth laughed. I hadn't noticed, he said. They walked all around the Vatican. There were masterpieces everywhere. These guys were good, said the duck. You can say that again, said Dawsworth. This time the duck actually did say it again. They passed by some workers. The workers were painting a doorway. The duck saw a bucket of white paint. Perfect, he said. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Dodsworth noticed the duck was missing. Now, where'd he go, he said. Dodsworth started back the way they had come in. The way they had come in. Let's try that sentence again. Dodsworth started back the way they had come in. He, should, he couldn't have gone far, he said. Dodsworth walked back into the Sistine Chapel. He looked around but didn't see the duck. He looked up. Dodsworth couldn't believe his eyes. Stop, he shouted at the top of his lungs. What do you think the duck is doing? I think I know what the duck is doing. I think the duck is painting. Oh no. The duck was up on the ceiling. He was holding a brush with white paint. I was just going to add a duck, he said. Do not move, said Dodsworth. Now come down from there. You just said not to move, said the duck. <laughs> come down now, said Dodsworth. The duck came down. This is a masterpiece, said Dodsworth. You can't touch it. Sorry, said the duck. I just thought it needed a duck. If you see a painting in a museum or a painted wall or a painted ceiling, are you allowed to paint over it? No, you're not allowed to paint over it. Somebody did that art. They don't want you to paint over it. Chapter three, the flea market. You have to learn to behave yourself, said Dodsworth. The duck promised. Okay, let's find something to eat, said Dodsworth. They walked for about a mile. They saw a huge outdoor market. Hey, look, said Dodsworth, a flea market. Let's go. No, thanks, said the duck. I don't like fleas. It doesn't really have fleas, said Dodsworth. It's just called that. The market was very crowded. We should watch out for pickpockets, said D Dodsworth. The duck didn't have any pockets. The duck watched out for fleas instead. A pickpocket is someone who might come and try to steal things out of your pocket. They walked around the market for a while. Dodsworth looked at watches and lamps and books and hats and other things. The duck just kept looking for fleas. There aren't any fleas there, duck. They stopped at a pizza stand. They ordered two slices of pepperoni pizza. Across the way, Dodsworth saw a pizza throwing contest. You know, he said to the duck, you might be great at that. You're good at throwing food. Do you remember when he threw food? Remember in the pub in London and the pancakes in the first book? The duck entered the contest. He could barely reach the table. He piled some boxes to stand on. The duck started throwing the dough. He threw perfect pizzas. A crowd started gathering around. Yeah, this. Just throwing that dough. Have you ever done that? Have you ever seen someone do that? Might be a fun thing to try at home, families. Or maybe not, I don't know. Nobody threw pizza as well as the duck. Things seemed to be going quite well. Dodsworth yelled, duck, my suitcase is gone. I bet the fleas took it, shouted the duck. There are no fleas, yelled Dodsworth, but we have to find it. The duck jumped up on the table. He looked all around the market. He pointed at a hippo with a suitcase. There it is, he shouted, and there's the thief. Dodsworth ran up, what? Ran up to the hippo and grabbed the case. <gasps> Do you see the hippo? That looks like the suitcase, doesn't it? It's kind of a fancy hippo. Hey, what's the big idea, said the hippo. It was not Dodsworth's case. Sorry, said Dodsworth, my mistake. The duck spotted a horse with a suitcase. You see it? There it is, shouted the duck. They ran up to the horse, but he wasn't holding their case either. 
Many cases looked just like theirs. They ran all over the market. Dodsworth knocked over a fruit stand by accident. There's something I would do, said the duck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's something I would do, said the duck. The merchants all stared at Dodsworth. It wasn't a very good afternoon. I always end up with food on the ground, these books. These apples look good. Dodsworth and the duck left the flea market. Most of our money was in that case, said Dodsworth. I've had that thing for years. Rotten pickpockets, said the duck. All day they wandered around Rome. Their suitcase seemed gone for good. Evening fell over the city. Dodsworth and the duck were very tired. We can't go back to the hotel without money, said Dodsworth. We'll look more, we'll look more in a little bit. He lay down on the Spanish steps and took a nap. Chapter four, Arrivederci. Dodsworth slept for most of the night. When he woke up, the duck was counting money on the steps. Where did you get that, he asked. I found it, said the duck. Where, asked Dodsworth. Around the corner, said the duck. We should find out whose it is, said Dodsworth. That would be impossible, said the duck. Dodsworth wasn't sure what to do. I guess it's okay since you just found it, said Dodsworth. Exactly, said the duck, finders keepers. Well, this is good luck, said Dodsworth. They celebrated with a delicious breakfast. What are they eating? I'm not sure. They took an afternoon carriage ride through the city. They ate ravioli near the forum. They had spaghetti that evening at a fine restaurant. It was a splendid day. I like that there's a violin being played while they're eating. That's a sign of a very fancy restaurant. The next day, they strolled along the Tiber River. Ooh, they crossed over the Bridge of Angels. They had a delicious lunch near the Arch of Constantine. That evening, they dined on rigatoni with tomato sauce. I can't believe all that money was just lying on the ground, said Dodsworth. Well, not exactly on the ground, said the duck. Oh, said Dodsworth. What do you mean, not exactly? It was in that giant fountain, said the duck. Dodsworth spit out his rigatoni. The Trevi Fountain, shouted Dodsworth. You took the money from the Trevi Fountain? Nobody wanted it, said the duck. I don't believe this, said Dodsworth. We could get arrested. He paid the check and they went outside. You're not allowed to take coins from fountains, you guys. We have to come up ah, with that money and return it, said Dodsworth. It's not ours. The duck felt bad. Just then a small cat skidded up next to them. Oh. <laughs> No, just then a small car skidded up next to them. Aha, said the driver, I found you. Dodsworth panicked. It's not a cat, by the way, it's a cow. I can explain, he said. The duck didn't understand about the fountain. He does crazy things all the time. That's true, said the duck. I don't know what you mean, said the fellow, but I believe this is yours. He pointed to the suitcase in the back seat. Dosworth was thrilled. Where did you find it, he asked. The duck used it to stand on for the pizza throwing contest, said the fellow. Oops, said the duck. Guess I forgot. Also, the duck won the contest, he added. You get 10 free pizzas at Luigi's. Congratulations. Grazie, said Dodsworth. That means thank you in a, oh, he turned to the duck. That means thank you. Ah, said the duck. Well, hey, grassy, grassy. That's not the same thing. Arrivederci, said the fellow as he drove away. I can't believe you were standing on the suitcase, said Dodsworth. Just wanted to make the trip a little more exciting, said the duck. Well, you did, said Dodsworth. That you did.
They both laughed and walked down the street. They arrived at the Trevi Fountain. They turned around and closed their eyes. And as the bells began to chime throughout Rome, they slowly started throwing coins into the water. And they're gonna be there a while throwing coins to make up for all the coins the duck took that they spent at those fancy restaurants. The end. Applauso in silencio for our dogs worth and our duck. Um, have you ever lost something and thought that someone took it, but then it turns out you just misplaced it? That's happened to me before. Or I've said to someone, you moved my thing and now I don't know where it is. And it turns out you just forgot what you did with it, like the duck. I think that's happened to all of us and it's a good reminder for us to be thoughtful when we're accusing people of taking our stuff with that suitcase, right? Um, so listen, that was our fourth Dodsworth. There's only one left and we're going to a different part of the world. Do you think you know? Do you think you know where we're going? I'm gonna tell you. And then next time I'll ask if you remember where we're going. We're going to a country in Asia that is made up of islands where they speak Japanese. What do you think? We're going to Japan. Japan and specifically the city of Tokyo. So get ready for that'll be tomorrow. Uh, and in the meantime, find some great resources on our big old resource doc. Uh, read some good uh, epic ebooks. Uh, read the stuff you've already got. You know, I say the same thing every time. I miss you guys and I hope that you are well. And I'll see you next time. Mwah.